Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello there, my friend. Welcome to the Tuesday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes, and we call our Tuesday broadcast by this title. We call it our Tract and Truth Tuesday. Track and Truth Tuesday. The word track is spelled T-R-A-C-T, and we're talking about a gospel tract, a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. They're a gospel tract that's in a format small enough to carry readily with you and give out easily. Tract and Truth. The truth we're talking about is gospel truth. Now, friend, thank you for joining us today. If at all possible, sit down, get something on which you can jot some notes. On our other days of the broadcast, we are walking through books of the Bible. Right now, we're doing a study in 2 Peter. But today, I'm going to read a verse that probably you know quite well, but get something on which you can jot down five steps on how to share the gospel with an atheist. That's where we're headed here. I'll say something about that in a moment. I've got a gospel tract in my hand I want to highlight. As a matter of fact, this is our hallmark track, and I'll say something about that in just a moment. Well, one of the witnessing training ideas I come back to with regularity is this one. How do I share the gospel with a person who says they are an atheist? And I've often said there are really very few atheists. Most people will say that what they really believe in is that they just don't know for sure if God does exist or not. Now, that person technically is an agnostic. But if you're in a witnessing discussion time, don't correct them. Just accept their statement. It really doesn't matter. So how do you and I share the gospel with a practicing atheist? Now, this is Mark Smith's approach. There are others, I'm sure. Why don't you stay tuned, have that pen and paper handy. With that pen and paper handy, you'll be ready to jot down our contact information At the end of this broadcast, my announcer is going to come back on and give you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. If you will do that, we'll send you a sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks, including this one, our hallmark track. It's entitled The New Birth. The New Birth. This track was written by our founder. It really set the stage for the ministry that birthed out of that, which is Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our founder had a profound impact as he was out doing evangelistic work by clarifying for people in Bible preaching churches what the new birth really is. So many people, even those who've grown up in church, so many people are so confused over what in the world is the new birth. This gospel track goes like this. It begins by laying out what the new birth is not. It is not religion. It is not morality or how to live a moral life. It is not just doing some kind of reformation in your life. It begins by explaining those things. And then it says, here is what the new birth is. It explains that it's a mystery explained by Jesus himself in John chapter three. The new birth is a work of God, not a work of man. Let me read you part Part of the track, it says this, a birth is the coming into being of a new life, which has the nature of its parents. When you were born the first time, you were made a partaker of the old nature, the sinful nature we all receive from Adam. When you are born again, you become a partaker of the divine nature, according to 2 Peter 1.4. Is this true of you? Do you have the divine nature? It lays it out very clearly. Then it says this, 
what you must do to be born again. Oh, friend, so many hundreds and thousands of people have come to Christ through this track, The New Birth. Get it from us, please. Be ready when my announcer gives our contact information or just simply go to our website, which is www.biblecracks.com. Dot O-R-G, and remember that word tracks is T-R-A-C-T-S. Psalm 19, verse 1, well-known verse says this, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament, or the skies, showeth his handiwork. By the way, before I get into sharing the gospel, can I share with you one of my favorite stories? It's not out of my own life, but a favorite story of how a man came to Christ. A man was witnessing and thought he had no success whatsoever. There was a believing man who had a friend who was a hard-hearted guy who just did not want to respond to the gospel. Many times, this Christian man had shared the gospel with his friend, but to no avail. Well, this friend just remained such like a rock, hard-hearted to Jesus. Well, the believing man's local church was holding a special Good Friday service, and obviously it was coming right before Easter. The service was being put together to present the gospel to lost people, and so the church folk were working to get their lost friends to attend. Well, the Christian man went to his hard-hearted friend one more time, and pleaded with him to come to the service. But the lost man just remained just stone, hearted and cold to things, and said he refused to come, and the Christian man left the house greatly discouraged. What that believer did not know was that his lost friend there was having a new floor laid, a tile floor laid in his kitchen. The tile man heard the pleading of the Christian man and was struck by his loving concern for his lost friend. Well, once the Christian man left the lost man's house, the tile guy went out to his truck, phoned his wife, and told her what had happened. He told his wife that this man cared so much about people, they needed to go to that good friend. Friday service. Well, the rest of the story is that the tile guy and his wife did go, and they both received Christ. Oh, my soul winner friend, never doubt, never doubt that God is always at work in hearts, even if you and I can't see it at the moment. Our job is to faithfully sow the gospel seed and then let God be in charge of the harvest. If we sow little, well, then we're going to have little fruit. Let's not spare the gospel seed, amen? How then do we share the gospel with an atheist? Step number one is what in my approach is this. I ask their permission to share why I believe in God. I know they don't believe, but can I share with you why I do believe there is a God? And almost every time they'll say yes. Now with this presentation and asking for their permission, It's going to prevent you from seeming to be seemingly overly pushy in giving the gospel, and it's going to not create a barrier when you obviously use the Bible. They expect you to. That's step number one. Step number two is I read or quote the verse I gave here, Psalm 19.1 because the verse talks about the glory of God being seen in creation. The verse says the heavens declare the glory of God. That word declare is translated other places in the Bible by the words show forth. What creation shows forth is God's glory. Well, what is God's glory? Well, that's simply a word that refers to God's greatness. Often, when I'm reading or quoting this verse, I'll stop and say something like this. Creation reveals how important God is, how weighty a person he is. That's what the word glory means. Then I say something like this. This world is real, it's tangible, it actually exists. It would be illogical to believe something real and tangible came into being from nothing, from something that is non-existent. There had to be a cause behind how it got here. Now, that's just pure logic. Third step in my sharing with them is this. I use an illustration. Now, please do me a favor. Keep your illustrations simple and clear and just focused on one thing. 
When I use an illustration, more often than not, I will use this one over and over and over again. I say this, if I were to walk down the street in some city and see a hopscotch game chalked onto the sidewalk, I would automatically know that there had been a child there at one point in time. The evidence that a child had been there is obvious. I see the child's handiwork. Even if there's no children around at the time, I know there had been a child there at one point in time, and the atheist person you're talking to will automatically have to agree with you. Well, that opens the door for me to talk about the physical world of ours being God's handiwork. If we see a child's handiwork on the sidewalk, let's look around. The heavens declare God's handiwork. The heavens and the earth prove that there must be some intelligent person behind it all. I make the point to say that creation tells me certain facts about the creator behind the creation. Number one, he is obviously very powerful. Number two, he is obviously very wise. Number three, he is obviously greater than any human being that was ever born. That allows me to say that God is not one of us. He's not a human being, nor are we God. A lot of people like to think that they are their own God, but they've never created anything this wonderful. They may have made a birdhouse at one point in time. They may have actually built their own home, but they've never made a world like this. The fourth thing I do is this. I talk then of God's grace and love. At this point, I simply make this point. God, the God who made all of this, did so for a reason. There's too much reason and there's too much order in the universe. There was an orderly, logical being behind all this. People make things for a reason. God made this for a reason. And because God made human beings with the ability to reason and understand that he exists, then it's only logical to think that he would then communicate with his created beings to whom he gave the kind of brains and minds and logic that he gave to us human beings. Now that brings me to step number five. At this point, I talk about two things, the Bible being God's written communication and Jesus being God's personal communication. We have God's written communication and God's personal communication. I say to the person who does not believe in God, and they usually don't believe the Bible either, I say to them, I believe the Bible because of the logic that God would communicate if the God who created all this made us with logical minds and the ability to communicate, that must reflect something about him. God is a communicating God. He communicated something to us in creation. He's then gave us a written communication, but the greatest communication of all is his son, Jesus Christ. And I usually quote out of John 1 that grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And at that point, I simply make a simple, simple, simple gospel presentation as to why Christ came, why he died on the cross, and why he rose from the dead. And I say to my atheist person, friend at this point in time, then believing in the resurrection is of no difficulty to me because the God who created all things is the God who came here. If he's got the power to make all things out of nothing, then this God can raise the dead. And he did. It's a historical fact. And I asked them to receive the God who made all things and came to die for them. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.